welcome to the Imperial Symphonies Orchestra 101. My name is Dr. Kim and I am the concertmaster of the Imperial Symphony Orchestra. My friends from the orchestra have helped me create some videos that introduce different families of the orchestra and the instruments that are members of those families. As a concertmaster, I lead the violin section. So, I'll be telling you all about it. The violin is made of wood. It has following parts. The chin rest, the tailpiece, the bridge, four strings, F holes, fingerboard, scroll, and the tuning pegs. To play the violin, I also need a bow, which is made of wood, and a horse hair. So to produce the sound, I need to place my bow on the string and simply move it. To play different notes on the same string, I need to put my fingers on the fingerboard. So the violin section sits on the left side of the stage if you look at it from the audience. This happens because violinists hold their instruments on the left shoulder and the sound comes from the top part of the instrument. And so this way the sound can travel easier to the audience. Here's how it sounds like. right this is row your boat violin music is mostly written in the treble clef which is used for the high-pitched instruments so the lowest note on the violin is G and the highest one can be anywhere around this the violin when I was six years old. At this point I have been playing the violin for 28 years and now I'm a professional violinist. This means that I'm an expert at playing the violin and can work in the symphony orchestra. In the symphony the violin mostly play, plays classical music. violin could play? What about fiddle music? Did you know that the violin and the fiddle are the same exact instrument? The only difference between a violin and a fiddle is the type of music that it plays. Can you imagine yourself playing the violin? Go ahead and play some air violin with me right now. Remember the row your boat song? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Great job. I think you would be really good at playing the violin. Next, my friend Dr. Ramirez will tell you all about another instrument which is a member of the string family, the viola. See you in the symphony! Hi everyone, my name is Rafael Ramirez and today I'm going to be talking about the viola. I'm the principal viola player for the Imperial Symphony Orchestra and I want to, before that, compare the violin that you just saw with Dr. Kim. The violin is slightly smaller, but the pitch, the sound is higher because of the length of the strings. Now, we have also on the viola four strings as the violin, but they are tuned differently. We have A, the D, 
G and the C. Exactly like the cello, but one upper higher. And we're gonna see that later on with Mr. Shedlock. Now, really cool, really important, because they are a member of the same family. They share something in common. We have kind of the same structure, the same shape, and we have the same scroll, pegs to tune the instrument. We have the neck, the fingerboard, the strings, we have the bridge, we have the sound holes, we have the a a tailpiece, chin rest, end pin, and we have the body of the instrument. Now, we use something to play the instrument with. Remember this? Yes, the bow. And it's made of a special beautiful wood. And remember what is this? Yes, horse hair. And the viola sound like this. Now, because it's a special day, today I'm going to introduce another instrument that I play since I'm a little kid, and that is the mandolin. Now, the mandolin is also an Italian instrument, and it has eight strings, and the cool thing is it's tuned the same as the violin. And it sounds like this. Now we have also different type of mandolin I just want to show you quickly. So look at how cool is this one. And they are tuned the same way. And we have electric ones. And you can play rock, but you can play many, many different type of music. Now with the mandolin is really common here in America. We can play bluegrass, we can play country music, and you can count. It would be great, guys, if you can try to play the viola or the mandolin. I hope to see you right there with the symphony. Bye-bye, take care. Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. Sedloff, and I'd like to tell you all about the cello. The cello is made of wood and has a lot of the same parts as the violin and viola, except instead of a chin rest, the cello has an end pin. I could never put this under my chin. It's way too big. Instead, I sit in a chair and hold the cello between my knees like this, and this is how I play it. The cello also uses a bow. It's held a little bit differently from the violin and viola, but it still makes the same kinds of sounds. The cello strings have the same names as the viola strings, but they sound a little bit lower. The strings are C, G, D and A. Do you know which family of instruments the cello is part of? That's right, the string family. The section of, of the orchestra, the cello section of the orchestra sits to the right of the conductor when you're looking from your seat in the audience. Here's what the cello sounds like. cello reads music in the bass clef. Bass clef notes are in the low range. If you've ever seen a piano, the notes mostly in the left hand are the, are, are the, the notes that are in bass clef. People ask me, when did you start playing the cello? And usually my answer is, I started playing the cello when I was about 10 years old. It's about two years before astronauts first landed on the moon. That was a long time ago. And I chose the cello because of the beautiful, the beautiful sounds it made. And I wanted to do something a little bit different from other members of my family that played the violin. I've been playing the cello for many years now. I kind of gave you a little bit of a, of a clue in, in, in um, when I started. And now I'm a professional cellist. Do you, know, do you remember what it means to be a professional? That's right. It means I'm an expert at playing the cello, and it's my job to play the cello in the symphony. In fact, I'm the principal cellist, which means I lead the cello section and help coordinate the cello section to coordinate with the rest of the string section. Can you imagine yourself playing the cello? Go ahead and play some air cello with me right now. Remember, row, row, row your boat? Here we go. One, two, three. 
two, three, four. <laughs> job. I think you would be great at playing the cello. Next, my friend Ms. Cordero will tell you all about another member of the string family, the bass. See you at the symphony. I'm Miss Cordero and I'm here to tell you about the bass. The bass is made of wood and consists of many of the same parts as the violin, viola, and cello. Like the cello, the bass uses an end pin instead of a chin rest. There's no way I could fit this under my chin. The bass can be played standing up or sitting on a tall stool. I sit when I play with the symphony and I stand when I play with my jazz group. The bass also uses a bow. I hold the bow a little bit differently than the other strings do, but I still pull it across the strings to play. The bass uses an extra sticky rosin on the hair so that the strings can resonate. These strings are super thick so that extra stickiness helps them ring longer. Sometimes I pluck the strings instead of bowing them, like this. That's called pizzicato. It's just kind of a funny sounding word, right? It sounds a little bit like pizza. The bass strings are really similar to the violin strings. They have the same names, but they're just in reverse. So I start with E, then A, then D, then G. The strings on the bass are so long that the distance between the notes is much farther than on the other string instruments. The bass section of the orchestra sits to the right of the conductor behind the cellos when you're looking from your seat in the distance. Here's what the bass sounds like. Do you recognize that song? Yeah, it's row, row, row your boat. Bass clef notes are in the low range. The bass reads in the bass clef. If you've ever seen a piano and looked down at the keyboard, the left hand plays those really low notes, or notes in the bass clef. I started to play the bass when I was 14 years old. I chose the bass because I wanted an instrument that could be played in a lot of different kinds of music. And I liked how big it was. I thought that was pretty cool. I've been playing the bass for 16 years, and now I'm a professional bassist. Do you remember what it means to be professional? That's right, it means I'm an expert at playing the bass and it's my job to play the bass in the symphony. I play classical in the music in the symphony, but you can hear the bass in almost every type of music. I've heard the bass in rock music, rockabilly music, country, bluegrass, and my favorite genre, jazz. yourself playing the bass? Go ahead and make an air bass and we're gonna play together on row 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 your boat. Ready? Let's try it. One, two, here we go. Awesome! I think you would make a great bass player. Now let's hear all of the string instruments play together. <laughs> 